So, um, in the last recording, uh, we were copying all the events um, to each one of these icosahedrons. How was that? Beautiful, right? And um, what I did since then is just spread them a little bit further apart so that as they're following along with the cursor, there's just a little bit more of a gap and more time to enjoy the uh, effect. So, um, basically, uh, basically, what you what you want to do after after you do that is again just make sure that they're aligned, centered on the Z and Y axis. Um, uh, that'll make the that'll make it so that they're you know on the same plane uh, as they're following this giant yellow box shape thing. So, um, what we have going on is um, many different things. So the first box, um, there's a little bit of a bug when uh, when this one's spinning around. So this yellow shape is going to be stationary for the whole time. But um, in addition to the follow effect, which each um, smaller shape follows the, the, sh the next shape um, in front of it, not the cursor, only this yellow one is following the cursor. So each one is following the next shape, um, which gives it, you know, that cool that cool follow effect. As you say, as you can see, this is four following three. Um, also, I increased the offset, which is the distance between um, the shapes that they follow, and the damping um, with a pretty large increment uh, for each and every one of these uh, as it gets bigger and bigger. So um, you have a longer trailing effect going on. So um what 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 also is happening is uh like I said there's a bug when you when I do this on on this yellow one so I keep that one still but we have a base state and a state in each one of these along with a loop that starts at the beginning it's a transition and what it is is um you know it's just a typical transition this one lasts 4 seconds the next one lasts 3 seconds and this one lasts 2 seconds and what it does is just take it from base state to state in a linear um, way so that it doesn't slow down and speed up and um, it just spins in these two um, on these two axes is a full 360 degrees so there's like an endless loop of spinning going on uh, with these uh, following the cursor so um, with this one it's just zero damping, zero offset, and it stays right on uh, your cursor uh, uh, of your website. Um, I'm sure there's coding uh, to make your actual cursor disappear, but um, what's so great about this new embed uh, spline view um, you know, update that they had come out just today um, it's going to be a lot easier to embed these projects into your website and be able to get the scaling and the positioning and all that stuff correct in inside the app um, instead of having to you know no coding or know how to edit the embed code um, in a way that uh, makes it fit properly with your website. It's going to be a lot easier for you know us normal people who don't know how to do intense stuff like that to upgrade our Wix or our Shopify pages and stuff like that, whatever it is you may have, um, your, you know, your art website, your portfolio website, um, even uh, your Behance portfolio, uh, which um, if you guys saw my puzzles and games video, uh, there's a free link to try out the puzzle and game that I made on my Behance. And um, it's a shame because you have to use your mouse wheel to kind of zoom out and position the puzzle in the right shape before you can get started. And I'm sure there's a way to fix it, but um, you know it requires knowing how to edit the code, and I just don't know how to do that. So if if you want to try out the puzzle and game, um, there's a link under the puzzles and games video. But you'll see what I mean when you get there. That um, you know you have to hold down the cursor wheel and kind of position the puzzle. So hopefully this will be eliminated. So that's why I wanted to just do something simple today like this cursor follower um, so we can start adding some cool stuff to our websites. All right, now let's uh, let's get into this Dobby thing. What do you say?
working on images, um, which is going to be several videos starting next week. Uh, images is our material. And so I thought we'd do something to kind of introduce you to that so you can start messing around with the settings and having a little fun with it before we get into it. So let's get started. Um, I got these three pink balls with a blue background. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to click Add in the material section and go to Image. Click this little PNG gray checkerboard. They recently added this AI button, which is super fun to mess around with if you don't have an image. But since we do, um, we're going to start off with Arnold and Gerald. Put them on a the ball there. You can do this with your logo, whatever it is that you have. And uh, mess around with the settings a little bit. And you got a fun little, um, you know, Nickelodeon themed cursor getting started there. Next, we're going to add, is it Donnie or Dobby? I don't know. I'm not really sure, to be, to be totally honest. I think it might be Donnie. I think Dobby is Harry Potter. But that being said, Thornberry is definitely... Actually, well, that's not his last name. I think they picked him up in the wild, didn't they? That's kind of kidnapping, right? Anyway, here he is, taking up the full circle. No repeat. Another fun little way to do it. Um, if you increase or decrease these scale buttons to equal sizes, uh, you can make these kind of wild patterned looking things, but I don't think that's quite as cool as that. So, final thing. And this is a great little tip. We're going to take this ball and we're going to add just the standard glass material under it. Oh, here we go. So we got an invisible glass ball here. Um, if we were to move it in front of Mr. Adopted Thornberry right here, um, you could start to see the blur of the glass that you have right there. But... If you get a PNG image, which has a transparent background, which I happen to have handy, you can add an image over top of the material, like so. Got SpongeBob as a PNG image. And what you'll end up with is um, an image over the glass that only shows the image itself and not, you know, some white background. And this is a great way to make uh, loading balls for your app, kind of like Siri or, you know, the spinning rainbow on, on Macs and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, it's just a, a super way to, a fun way to combine um, materials, which, as I, as I said before, is like one of my favorite things to do in this, in this app is uh, combine your materials because uh, you can make some really, really amazing things happen. So... Yeah, there you have it, folks. Um, little fun introduction to images. Um, we're going to get started on that next week. Um, I'll just align these. Never forget that. And show you the final product. Yay, Nickelodeon. All right, see you guys next week. Cheers.